Hello, my name is Michael Lambert and uh, today I want to talk a little bit about our uh, our bright, shiny new government under Liz Truss. Um, but before I do that, I just want to mention that I didn't um, post last week uh, following the death of the Queen I, because I wasn't quite sure whether that was appropriate or not. In, in fact, I, I, I probably should have done so. I, I had planned to do a video about the legacy of uh, Boris Johnson, but uh, maybe I'll do that another time. As far as the death of the Queen is concerned, I, I, I mean, I'm like many, many millions of other people think she was a, a, a great credit to this nation and a really wonderful woman, very wise and, uh, and a woman with a sense of humour and, uh, and uh, the job she was doing must have been, especially for a whole lifetime, must have been so difficult and so onerous, but uh, I think she, she did it with yeah, fantastic dignity and... Uh, and, and, and I, 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 like many people, miss her. Um, as far as the monarchy is concerned generally, I don't have any very strong views. Um, I, I, uh, as far as the House of Lords is concerned, so I do away with that tomorrow and I do away with all titles and I think I get rid of most of the, uh, the sort of royal hangers-on. But I think it's quite good having a head of state who is non-political. Um, I think the, the biggest argument for keeping the monarchy is that the alternative might well be that you'd have President Truss at the end of uh, you know, living in Buckingham Palace, and I, I, I'm not sure that would be any good to, to anyone. So anyway, uh, Truss has started to appoint her, her well, she's appointed all her ministers and so on. Um, she's done nothing whatsoever to reach out to those who supported uh, Rishi Sunak. She starts off with a support of less than half of her MPs. Uh, in, a, in a recent survey, I saw that 12%, just 12% of the public think that she will be a good prime minister. So she doesn't start with a lot of, a lot of confidence behind her. I think uh, she's somebody, as I've said before, I mean, she's just a bit of a lightweight. She's no uh, great intellectual, I don't think. She's flipped and flopped all over the place. Uh, during the campaign and previously, you know, we all know about having been a Remainer and become a uh, arch anti uh, anti um, anti Europe politician. Um, she started appointing ministers, and uh, looking at who she's appointing gives us an idea of what sort of government she's going to lead. And uh, it's pretty clear it's going to be pretty right wing. She has, for example, Theresa Coffey as uh, deputy prime minister and uh, secretary of state for health, of course, as well. We've all seen the photographs of uh, Teresa. That's Teresa with two French accents on her first name. Um, we've seen that picture of her with a cigar in one hand, a pint of beer in the other hand, wearing some scruffy old T-shirt in some karaoke bar. Um, not, not, not a very dignified sort of woman. Um, one of the first things she did, a bit like Rhys Moore, one of the first things she did when she became Secretary of State for Health was to write to everyone saying that she didn't want them... Well, first of all, she wanted them all to be positive and, and reports should be positive. And uh, she wanted them to stop using the uh, Oxford comma because that annoys her. The Oxford comma, incidentally, is when you have a whole list of, 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 of items and you have commas after each of them. Uh, the final uh, word before the and uh, shouldn't have a comma after it. That comma is known as an Oxford comma. So that gives you some idea where the health service is absolutely in crisis uh, with, what is it, 6.8 million people waiting for operations and so on. The, the, the new Secretary of State for Health thinks that the Oxford comma is what she should be uh, she should be talking about and giving priority to. A bit like Rhys Mogg, you know, when he was made a minister, first of all, he, he wrote to everybody saying that certain words were not to be used and that um, uh, any men who were written to her to be uh, addressed as a squire. I'm just pathetic. Then there's uh, the lovely Suella Braverman, who's now our, our Home Secretary. She uh, kind of makes uh, Pretty Patel look like a lovely, soft, cuddly kitten. You know, she is just really a, a really hard woman. Uh, she thinks that uh, one of the reasons why we're having uh, economic problems is because there are too many people claiming benefits, benefit cheats. And she wants to clamp down on, on people who want benefits. She wants to do the uh, UNHCR because uh, they're making it difficult for, for us to send... Uh, asylum seekers to Africa and wherever else we can send them to get rid of them. Um, she's really, really, really tough and uh, exceptionally um, unpleasant. There's Rhys Mogg, he's the uh, Secretary of State for Business and uh, what is it, Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. 
what he knows about any of that, who knows? Um, perhaps he'll make a, a, a greater success of that than he did as Minister for Finding Brexit uh, Opportunities. Um, the main ones of which I think were being able to have more powerful vacuum cleaners and being able to repaint the signs inside the Dartford Tunnel. Um, but let's hope as, as, as Minister for, uh, for, for Business, who's going to play a vital role in the future economy, let's hope that he does better than he did as uh, Minister for Finding, uh, Finding Fairies. Incidentally, since, uh, well, between July the 22nd and October the 17th, that's almost three months, Parliament, during some of the biggest crises we've faced for a very long time, the cost of living crisis, the, uh, the war in Ukraine, and so on. Uh, during those three months, it will have sat for a total of five days, two of which were spent paying tribute to the Queen. So in three months, it will have sat, uh, Parliament, during this time of great crisis, will have sat for three days. Now, Truss, of course, uh, is uh, famous for having said that she, she would not... Uh, she did not believe in handouts. She was not going to give any handouts to anybody to help them with their electricity bills. Absolutely no. She was going to go for tax cuts. Seemed to ignore the fact that people who were really struggling most of all with electricity were people who weren't paying any tax because they weren't earning enough money. But anyway, that's all she was going to do. She was adamant about it throughout the campaign, but amazingly, she did a U-turn. And now, what she's going to do is she's going to borrow £130 billion, borrow that, and she's going to give it to the um, power companies who and that will go towards their 170 billion pounds of unexpected windfall profits so that they can then charge us less for our electricity and gas so uh, um, the electricity you know the power companies will all, all a lot of whom incidentally coincidentally contribute to the Tory party they will all gain these billions and billions they won't even know what to do with it. there's going to be so much she says it's because if if they were to be taxed, if we were to windfall tax them in order to help people pay their bills, um, uh, they wouldn't invest in this country anymore. They'd, 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 they'd all go away, I suppose. I don't know. What would they do? But anyway, that's the idea. And the way we're going to get this 130 billion, incidentally, the, the 130 billion is going to be spent evenly. So, you know, you, 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 if, you're, if you're better off, you'll, you'll save more on your electricity and gas. It's not targeted. So poor people uh, will obviously uh, uh, benefit less than, 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 than wealthier people. But the way it's going to uh, be, be, be repaid, this is going to be a loan. Uh, we're, we're going to pay it back. Taxpayers are going to pay it back. Businesses are going to get this loan for for just six months. So at the end of six months, you know, there was a lot of a lot of uh, there were a lot of reports uh, uh, recently about how businesses were finding the electricity bills going up from I don't know twenty thousand pounds to one hundred and fifty thousand pounds and just being unable to pay it. Well, they've got a reprieve for six months. Now, businesses that know that. In six months' time, it could well be that there's no more support and their, their, their electricity bills go shooting through the roof. They're not going to be investing. They're not going to be investing because they see there's no future. And whatever future there is, is very, very, very uncertain. So it's a, a bit of a mishmash. It's a bit of a compromise. It's a total U-turn. And it's quite, quite different from what they're doing in the EU. In the EU, they say power companies should not profit from war which is what is happening it's because this is all because of the, the war in Ukraine and, and Putin. And so they are imposing a, a windfall tax on the power companies of 140 billion, which is what they're, what they're going to uh, use to help cushion uh, people's electricity bills, gas bills throughout the EU. Which is, I mean, you might say it's a pretty obvious thing to do, but obviously not obvious to to our Prime Minister. Also, the EU are, are, are working very, very hard in, in order to try and reduce consumption of electricity and gas. We, we don't seem to be doing anything about that. I mean, the, 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 the public buildings are all still lit up and uh, uh, people aren't being encouraged to use less electricity. Uh, they're only using less electricity, they can't afford to use it anymore. Now, our uh, new Chancellor's Checker is uh, Kwasi Kwarteng. Kwasi Kwarteng is a very clever man, very clever indeed. He got a scholarship to Eton, then he got a double first to Cambridge. Absolutely brilliant. But he has a certain air of arrogance about him. I think he, he doesn't like um, people who aren't as clever as him, and that's just about everybody. And uh, I think he thinks he's, he's, he's quite a lot smarter. And he's like 
you know, you come across these university professors who may be doing nuclear physics or something incredibly, incredibly clever, but they don't really actually know how to butter a piece of toast, you know. In other words, they're completely in another world. And I think Quateng's there. I mean, he's just not, 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 not really got a clue. Obviously, he thinks he knows everything. But he, um, he, he's going to go for growth. He's going to go for growth. Now, I think the OBR estimated as a direct result of, of uh, Brexit, our, our GDP would fall by 4%. Kwarteng is going to go for 2.5% growth. So, in other words, 6.5% better than the OBR forecast. And how's he going to do this? Well, the, the main policy he's announced so far, it's, it, it's, it's very clever, really, really ingenious. What he's going to do, he's going to remove the upper limit on bankers' bonuses. Now, I'm sure people in, in, in Darlington and Wolverhampton are absolutely jumping for joy at the sound of this. Because what it means, really, is that, you see, if you want bankers to come here, I mean, they're not going to come if, if all they can do is, uh, if they, for example, if you earn £2 million pounds a year as a, as, a, as a senior banker, and you can only have double your, according to the law now, you can only have double your salary and a bonus at the end of the year. I mean, who's going to get by on, on, on £2 million plus £4 million bonus, £6 million? I mean, you can't live on that. So what he's going to do is do away with that limit, so as bankers from all over the world are going to flood into the UK, into this failing economy with a utterly incompetent government, a uh, 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 country which is a worldwide lifestyle, they're all going to flood in, and that will boost the economy by 6.5%. So, uh, so, so, so that, that's something to, 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 to look forward to. I, I don't know what else he's going to do to go for, for growth, but perhaps he'll, he'll tell us at some time. Um, but on the subject of going for growth, you know, when you turned your back on the biggest, richest market in the world, thereby damaging so many companies that would export to that market, where, where you've volunteered to go behind this enormous fortress of bureaucracy, red tape, which makes it almost impossible for many companies to export any longer, makes it very difficult for companies to import as well, for that matter. But when you've decided to make things so much difficult for yourself, to then talk about going for growth, I mean, that's, that's Alice in Wonderland. Do you know, if you were to decide that you wanted to go for growth, this is not something you're just going to do in a... They've got two years, they think they're going to win the next election. This is something that takes 10, 15, 20 years. You've got to target industries, you've got to train people, you've got to invest, you've got to, you've got to do so much. I mean, it's almost like planning your economy. Instead of that, they, what's he saying? What's Quartin saying? Going for growth. Going to go for growth. This is what Trust was saying throughout the uh, leadership campaign, wasn't it? Go for growth. Oh, yeah, go for growth. I'm going to go for being a lot richer, you know. Yeah. I haven't decided how. But I think, uh, I mean, it, you know, it's a question whether they really are stupid or whether they're deluding themselves or deluding us. But these politicians, this present government, they must, must know that people are not going to put up with this nonsense any longer. You know, when you look at what's going on throughout the economy, you look at the strikes that there have been already, the strikes that are in the pipeline. You look at uh, how badly everything is doing. You look at, look at retail sales, the fees only came out yesterday, retail sales collapsing. And you can see how many businesses... I mean, if your gas and your electricity is going up, your mortgage is going up, you might have got loans, you've got interest on that's going up, you've got food prices going up, everything, everything, everything is going up. You don't have any money left to go to the pub and go to the restaurant and go on holiday or to redecorate the kitchen or buy a new car. And so all those businesses that supply those sort of things are going to be suffering and suffering and going out of business. And so... To just say we go for growth, it, it's futile, and that's why, as I say, I think this business, this this government is doomed because it's just, it's just not going to succeed in going for growth. And uh, I think, as I say, I think they probably know that, and they probably know that people are going to start uh, protesting quite seriously, and so I think they're doing everything possible to make this 
as difficult, if not um, really uh, very dangerous to to protest. And I think we are slipping towards, quite quickly slipping towards a police state, and I think this is the most worrying thing of all. You know, we all know about the police crime sentencing and courts bill, uh, uh, Patel's uh, uh, bill, which made it... Uh, which gave the police the powers to stop demonstrations if they thought they were making too much noise or to tell them where they could go and where they couldn't go and so on. And uh, and, 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 and uh, I've given them a, a, a lot of extra powers. But there's another bill going through Parliament at the moment. It's called the uh, Public Order Bill. This will enable police to stop anybody going on a demonstration, stop them and search them without any any reason whatsoever. It, it will enable uh, the police to tell in certain individuals, uh, if, if they consider to be protesters, uh, or potential protesters, to ban them from going on protests. It, it, it will actually enable the police to limit um, internet access of some of these people. And it will also give them the power to fix uh, um, uh, tags, GSP tags on, on, on people they consider to be um, difficult customers, I suppose. And, and, and we've all seen, I think the whole world saw last week, how uh, that guy was wrestled to the ground and, and, and taken away, arrested and taken away because he shouted something at, uh, at Prince Andrew. And we all saw that woman who was also arrested and taken away and is going to go to court for holding up a sign, uh, an anti-monarchy sign. Now, it may be in bad taste, it may not be the right time to do it, it may be totally inappropriate, but freedom of speech is really, really, really important. Uh, and these sort of things whereby you can't protest. Do you know, remember those, you probably saw those films in, in Red Square where people were holding up signs and they were being taken away uh, by the uh, the police in Moscow? Uh, and, and I think one person was holding up a blank a blank piece of paper and they were also arrested and so on. I mean, this is like that. This is, this is going towards Russia, China, uh, uh, North Korea, whereby people cannot express their... their, their uh, their complaints about the government. And it's uh, it, it's something we should all be worried about. I, I, I think we are in the process of going towards becoming a police state with an authoritarian government. And, you know, it's advancing so fast. I mean, after Patel's bill and now this, this, this new public order bill, uh, I mean, what's going to come next? Um, you know, is, are... are, are um, People on uh, YouTube complaining about the government going to be going to be banned. Wouldn't be at all surprised. Are they going to find that coming towards the next election that it's not a, an appropriate time to have an election and bring in some law to say, uh, uh, um, f f in the interest of public order, there's not going to be an election or elections being postponed? You know, we're slipping that way, and it's very very worrying. Um, can I just say before finishing a uh, thank? Thank you to everyone who, who uh, in response to my last video, said that they were interested in buying a copy of my book. I, I would like to say that it will be coming out um, at about the end of the month, but I'll let you know as soon as, as, soon as it's available. And uh, so if you've watched this far, um, thank you. And uh, until next time, bye for now. <clears throat>